Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q2 FY24 conference call of HPL Electric and Power Limited, hosted by Elara Securities Private Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Mudit Kabra from Elara Securities Private Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Arshia. Good afternoon and a happy festive season to all. On behalf of Elara Securities, we welcome you all for the Q2 FR24 and H1 FR24 conference call of HPL Electric and Power Limited. I take this opportunity to welcome the management of HPL Electric and Power, presented by Mr. Gautz, Joint Managing Director and CFO. We will begin the call with a brief overview, but I'm very followed by. Um, sir, your voice is not audible. There is a distortion at your end. Um, is this better? No, sir. Could you come again? Is this better? Yes, so please go on. Uh, can you uh, reintroduce the management members? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hi, uh, hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, we welcome you all for the Q2 FR24 uh, and H1 FR24 conference call of HPL Electric and Power Limited. I take this opportunity to welcome the management of HPL Electric and Power, represented by Mr. Gautam Seth, Joint Managing Director and CFO. We will begin the call with a brief overview by the management, followed by Q&A session. I will now hand over the call to Mr. Shaid for his opening remark. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Mudit. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I am pleased to share that our performance for second quarter, FI24 and half yearly FI24, has demonstrated our ability and preparedness to meet the demands of the shift towards energy efficiency across all our product segments, metering and systems as well as consumer and industrial, we have showcased credibility in our capabilities to deliver excellence in our execution cycles and in achieving the growth milestone that we have been discussing with you all over the past quarters. Furthermore, our quarterly and half yearly performance affirms the company's position at the cusp of a new positive growth cycle that we see unfolding over the next three to five years alongside the government's ambition for smart meter rollout, greater connectivity, and nationwide conscious energy usage transition. Our focus remains on improving our infrastructure, technology, and market reach to maintain our consistent growth and market leading position, notably in the smart meter, switchgear, and wire and cable segments. In this light, our partnership with WirePass for RF mesh technology in smart meter communication infrastructure marks a significant stride towards technological excellence, enabling us to meet surging demand for smart metering solutions in a changing energy landscape. In addition, our ongoing specific capacity expansion for smart meters in our factories is an initiative catering to the rising demand with high precision metering solutions that are durable with high service level performance. We anticipate continued growth to add to this quarter's strong performance in our metering and systems segment in line with our positive growth this year. At HPL, we are dedicated to consistently delivering innovative and practical solutions across all our products. In the consumer and industrial segment, the company has achieved significant growth for switchgears and wires in H1 FI24, encouraging a positive trend to going towards the second half of the financial year. In LED lighting, we have faced a value erosion as an industry-wide phenomena due to a change in technology. We anticipate for this to improve and are confident for lighting segment growth to recover by Q4 FI24, adding to our performance of sustained quality growth overall. As we head into the future, we remain committed to operational excellence, financial resilience, and sustainable growth. We are focused on growing revenue, improving our margins, and strengthening key balance sheet ratios towards creating greater shareholder value. We are prepared to answer to India's metering transformation and to 
benefit from specific government schemes such as RDSs that are geared to improve our energy and housing infrastructure. We look forward to upholding the, the legacy of durable energy solutions through our ongoing growth journey spanning two decades. On that note, thank you for joining us today and being part of our strategic vision as we embark on a new chapter of high value growth. Let us begin with the Q&A sessions. Thank you, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use only handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Mr. Chandresh Malpani from Nevashe Investment Advisory. Please go ahead, sir. Hello. Yes, sir, you're audible. Yeah, hi. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. So, firstly, I want to know what is our targeted market share that we are seeing in this entire rollout of 25 crore smart meters? Uh, yeah, uh, so, you know, as this is a big opportunity, uh, we would be looking at anywhere between 25 to 30 percent of the uh, smart meter what would roll out. So that's like internally we, we will look at that. And if you see in the past also, uh, we have maintained a 20 to 25 percent market share. But, uh, you know, sometimes as, as we say, it's, it's, a, it's a little early right now on this, but as we go forward, you will see uh, a lot of orders from the AMI SPs coming to the, uh, the meter manufacturers and that is when the true uh, market share can be determined because right now a lot of action what we have seen is uh, basically the utilities placing uh, orders on the AMI SP. So I think anywhere between 25 to 30 percent should be uh, something which we uh, would be looking at. So sir, uh, uh, uh... So on this only, sir, what is our approach like? Uh, are we bidding as an AMISP or we will be just the sole manufacturer of meters and supply to AMISPs? What is our long term or we can say what, what is our view on this? No, our, uh, uh, our, our strategy is very clear that we uh, we are a leading manufacturer of uh, uh, smart meters and uh, we, we would look to be a leading supplier to the AMISPs. And, uh, uh, and th this would be the main, uh, the, the primary uh, goal for us. And as you see, uh, a lot of, uh, as I was just saying, the orders, a lot of orders are coming to the AMI SPs. But right. after a gap, you know, these get translated uh, back to the meter manufacturers. And that is when we are looking to get a very uh, large share of the, the meters from that. But apart from that, we are also, we have reviewed the, the ecosystem. And uh, we are like, uh, if you see on the, the tie-up we have done for the RF mesh. So there are certain other opportunities which are all within the same ecosystem. And uh, so we uh, would go a little beyond the uh, smart meter uh, into, uh, let's say, the communication technologies or even the HES, uh, the head and the software. Yeah. But uh, the primary focus would remain uh, the, the the supply and uh, you know in, uh, the, the size of the smart meters. Yeah. That is where the main focus would be. If we are not looking to uh, be as an AMISP, uh, where we could also be financing the project. Okay, okay. And sir, so uh, with this technical tie-up, uh, is it safe to assume that you cater to 75% of the AMI value chain? No, very, no, very difficult to uh, put a uh, number on that. But I would, I would not say that because uh, anyway, if uh, on a very broad ballpark uh, figure, let's say one third is the financing part. So anyway, I think we are uh, below the seventy-five percent. So, but yes, uh, uh, other than smart meters, the communication technology uh, and the uh, whatever that, whether it's an RF or some other uh, technology, that plays a very important role in terms of uh, uh, making the entire system robust 
but also on the cost component also so uh, so yes we would be a little beyond the uh, the smart meter but uh, i i don't think it would be 75% but still it would be uh, covering uh, a lot of the critical uh, areas in terms of cost as well okay okay and sir yeah, if you can uh, break up like the if we are if we have to see 25 crore smart meters to be rolled out so what would be into like single phase three phase ltct and stct i guess this four categories are are included in this 25 crore number probably i don't uh, i don't have the figures right away probably they could be available on uh, certain public we- uh, government websites but uh, yeah okay. but the majority in, in terms if you look at the quantity it is going to be the single phase uh, which right. is the highest because they have the highest users uh, so i'm just going by the existing trend what is it because eventually they are replacing the existing system with a new one so i guess the uh, the, the 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 usage pattern and the the population would remain the same so it's okay. going to be maximum the single phase and then thereafter uh, it, it it goes up yeah okay and sir lastly uh, the we see that uh, hpl uh, part exhibited at few expos recently so what has been your uh, any comments on that no it's good uh, as uh, in hpl we are continuously uh, you, you know we are uh, reaching out to our customers because looking at our product profile we are uh, focused uh, in uh, uh, almost every kind of segment whether it is domestic or retail or uh, even commercial industrial uh, city infrastructure which is the municipal corporations and the uh, the utilities and which uh, you know now through utilities uh, you know th- to the amisp so we are reaching out to all the customers so recently we did have couple of exhibitions so there was a wire and cable one which was more focused yes. on the specific uh, customers uh, including the infrastructure uh, segment for the wire and cable we had the renewable uh, energy uh, one where our solar products were there so we are uh, continuously participating and uh, we reach out to w- various customers and definitely the exhibitions make a good uh, way to connect or uh, to even get uh, uh, to break into new customers okay okay thank you sir and all the best yeah uh, th- thank you thank you participants who wish to ask questions may press star and 1 on their touch tone phone the next question is from the line of ms mitali shah an individual investor please go ahead ma'am good afternoon everybody uh, thank yeah, you for sharing yeah thank you for sharing this opportunity i have uh, you know a couple of questions uh, could you talk about the company's uh, recent revenue growth particularly in the first half of uh, fy24 and the expectations of revenue and profit in the upcoming quarters um also um, how are the changes in our operating expenses affecting the profitability okay yeah, so we have seen a, a decent growth uh, in the h1 and uh, primarily led by uh, metering where we did uh, 23% uh, growth and of course our uh, the order book has been if you see the The, the fresh orders taken in the first half have been uh, 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 quite uh, good right now and the execution in the second half has picked up where we see now on a quarter on quarter basis the execution should become much more stronger and uh, much better uh, in terms of uh, meters also we are anticipating uh, there are as the inquiries are also very large right now uh, uh, through the ami sp so we are anticipating a good Uh, second uh, se- second half for the metering and I- i'll take it up product wise product so it will be easy for uh, you to understand so uh, sure. in meters in meters we are uh, uh, having a lot of inquiries and we do anticipate that within the q3 itself or maybe in q4 we should be uh, getting in again uh, a lot of large orders so so that should look at uh, a very good uh, second half and uh, even going forward maybe in the next one to two years Uh, the order pipeline and the execution should be good now looking at even switch gears if you look at uh, we've had a 22% growth so switch gear within the consumer and industrial also has been uh, a steady growth uh, you know of course switch gear also has a very good uh, margin profile so that is something where we are again anticipating a sec- good second half wire and cable we have seen growths uh, the complete last complete year even in the first half we have had 17% growth and i think even going forward there also we are uh, pretty confident 
only in lighting in led lighting although the volume uh, has been fairly stable the value uh, degrowth has been there because of the uh, erosion in value of the unit values of a lot of items because of change in technology and i think this is uh, quite an industry wide phenomena because uh, when we look at uh, the the entire industry or even our peers or competitors who are there i think m many of them have uh, reported a, a drop in the values so somehow i think uh, the uh, you know with every change in technology or sometimes uh, over the years we do see certain of these things affecting the lighting but uh, i think uh, going forward by this q4 we anticipate that the value growths as well as the volume growths will come back and uh, so that should become better but overall if you see uh, bulk of our portfolio uh, is today uh, performing well we do see uh, a good upside uh, in the second half uh, going forward now regarding operating expenses uh, uh, you know in the first half our uh, overall uh, as a company we've grown 12% and uh, i think the ex operating expenses have still gone up by 3% so so of course uh, uh, certain fixed cost remains the same and i think even going forward we do anticipate a better second half and uh, hopefully we should be looking at controlling these expenses uh, to have a better margin uh, 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 from the business sure um also if you can just update us on your uh, export uh, export uh, performance um are we looking at any particular geographies um, as high growth opportunities yeah like yeah, our exports have been uh, steadily growing i think uh, uh, the, the good thing about exports is that the last 2 to 3 years we have uh, built up uh, a consistent uh, performance across the geographies where we are and uh, uh, even in terms of repeat businesses in terms of entering new geographies so there's been a fairly stable uh, uh, export growth Uh, the second half, uh, because uh, there have been a lot of inquiries which we have been right now pursuing, and uh, we feel the second half will be much better because right now, the, in terms of order book, our growth is only about 9.3 percent. But uh, maybe going forward, we are uh, anticipating a better second half. And uh, but there's a lot of certifications also we could do for our products uh, for international certification, which we have completed in the first half. so all that should bring in a uh, couple of new fresh opportunities for us now in terms of geographies uh, if you see uh, africa has been uh, uh, the fastest growing for us but uh, even the middle eastern gulf or the south countries have been fairly good for us so hopefully this uh, this is something which uh, you know going forward again we do anticipate a, uh, a good growth going forward on this right also um uh, could you discuss the company's approach to the capital expansion for smart meters as mentioned uh, why was this done and how will it help uh, in, uh, us in our uh, capacity uh, sorry can you repeat the last part of the question please um i'll just repeat my question uh, could you you know if you could discuss the company's approach to the capital expansion for the smart meters as mentioned uh, why was this done and how will it help us in our capacity yeah so generally if you look at uh, our capacity for the smart meter manufacturing is in place and uh, we have been uh, uh, you know our uh, executions have been going up but when we look at the uh, the inquiries what are there and also uh, partly the orders which we already have in our order book uh, i think the supplies of smart meter should really pick up uh, uh, you know in q3 q4 more specifically but by next year uh, sometimes sure it should be you know and uh, any capacity expansion what we are doing is more specific in nature uh, because there are a uh, few manufacturing processes which we feel require uh, much more capacity looking at the peak requirements to come in in q4 and the next year so these those kind of specific uh, aspects are being undertaken also since uh, the volumes are huge and a lot of uh, standardization is there in terms of the models and the specifications uh, so a lot of projects are underway right now for uh, the automation you know so to have a better uh, uh, you know manufacturing through automated processes and uh, to have a better utilization or uh, output of data coming in so these type of projects are going on and uh, accordingly our capex has been structured on the 
on on these part of the business so overall uh, when we look at next year that is where we will see the smart meters roll out to be very very strong and uh, with a lot of new orders expected to come in uh, i think that is where uh, this this uh, capacity expansion and uh, you know with these uh, automation we expect even a faster and a better output coming out from the production lines here so that should help us uh, definitely in the in the uh, future period here so this is just my last question um, how are we thinking on the smart meter trajectory over the next few years uh, do we see any changes in the technology or is it stable uh yeah so uh, so definitely the technology you know any electronic product uh, has a change in technology and uh, and that is the nature of uh, because you know one has a flexible way of designing the products so look at looking at uh, you know if you look at the smart meters uh, if you go back even the last two decades uh, you know every 5 years we have seen the change in technology of meters uh, you know from a regular electronic meter to a smart meter we have as a company seen the transition and uh, the next each time the next generation with better products uh, even in fact even uh, much more cost competitive products opted so we have seen that cycle and right now we have uh, what we all understand as a smart meter now uh, go going forward if you look at it the technologies will change but right now one has to understand that uh, the standards and the specification of the meters which we are talking about with the ami sps and the utility they are frozen so although there would be uh, this is my guess that there would be different ways of probably reaching those specifications which will be much more uh, advanced and other things but broadly the specifications under the uh, let's say the first phase of the smart meter roll out would remain the same because these are frozen by uh, the government and the ami sp and our customers so that is how it would be but going forward when we look at uh, let's say after 7 to 10 years when we look at the next phase of smart meters coming in there would definitely be much more smarter meters coming in maybe uh, with better connectivities maybe re totally redesigned with uh, even effective costs and uh, design so so a lot of things will happen and i'm sure our, our r&d uh, our teams what we have uh, i would believe they are fairly uh, we have a, a good r&d team uh, focusing on not only the smart meter but also all the related technologies what go along with that in the entire smart metering ecosystem so so i think a lot of uh, we will see a lot of changes happening in technology and the ability to cope up with those change or even drive those changes uh, suitable for the indian conditions is something what we will look at and uh, also we just to mention that uh, if you look at the capability what we have because post uh, the the rollouts what we do in india which would be probably the largest in the world i would believe that any manufacturer in india who is sufficiently doing a good amount of work can uh, uh, you know uh, can look at the export markets in a big way and international markets are also already some of them are moving to uh, to the smart meters but i would say the bulk of the requirements internationally would also come into the smart meter so maybe that can open out uh, you know new uh, markets for us because the existing uh, you know designs what we have or the technologies what we have and the capability to change will help us to uh, go into those markets in a bigger way yeah. sure thank you so much and all the best to the hpl team uh, thank you ma'am thank you participants who wish to ask questions may press star and one on their touchstone phone the next question is from the line of mr aman from aman investment please go ahead sir uh, yeah sure uh, thank you sir for the opportunity first of all uh, i'm having an issue on a good set of results happy to see a good margin increase am i audible sir uh, yeah no can you be louder please yeah yeah now is it clear yeah, yes please go perfect on. Uh, yeah okay sure thank you so i was saying congratulations on the set of results and seeing the margin expand further Sir, I have two questions, and I'll join again in the queue. First, I wanted to understand our current capacity utilization, and also how are we managing our reusable so that we can cater to these large orders and improve the matrices which we are talking about ROC, ROE going forward. Uh, 
I lost the presentation after the answer. Aman, I missed your second question, the first part, please. Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, sir, at first I asked that what is our current capacity utilization and how are we going to as a manage our margins with the high receivables with care, at the same time catering the large orders which we are going to get or we are probably executing them currently. So on, uh, if you can just highlight how we will increase the ROCE and ROE and the margins with such high receivables. Yeah, so so regarding the uh, current capacity utilization, uh, you, you know, I, I think at least uh, in three out of the four uh, product categories what we have, I think our capacity utilizations have gone up. Now, more specifically, if you look at the metering, I, I would say we, are, we should be anywhere between 70 to 75 percent of our capacity. Uh, as I said earlier uh, in the question also that there are some specific uh, uh, upgradations uh, what we are doing in the capacity which are uh, normally in process uh, uh, items what we are doing so that will further enhance our capacity but right now uh, you know uh, looking at the last three quarters and maybe even the next three quarters what are there we would see a quarter on quarter uh, enhancement of our capacity so right now looking at uh, a, let's say a window of six months one year broadly we we have sufficient capacity to take on the uh, the orders what we have but uh, yes we do anticipate uh, this part to really peak by next year and uh, th that is when the peak demand would be probably much higher than what we are currently anticipating so that is how we we are looking at it uh, in terms of even uh, switch gear and uh, uh, wire and cable, we have seen certain good growth and uh, similarly the capacity, broadly you can say 75% is our capacity utilization at times it was, so that's where we are. Looking at uh, the, the receivables, as I, what I understood, uh, the, in the margins, uh, even going forward, hopefully we should be, the way the Q2 has performed, we should be able to maintain those kind of margins going forward and probably in Q4 months, uh, much more smart meter and the metering business really expands. Uh, I'm sure the margins uh, could be better from the side. In terms of receivables, our receivables have gone uh, up because obviously of the sales. But as more and more smart meter, uh, you know, percentage goes up, uh, which would happen somewhere in Q4 and uh, then uh, in the next year, that is when we will see a much better payments, uh, more specific uh, dated payments coming because a lot of those uh, contracts, what we have are uh, against firm LC payments. And uh, that is when we will see uh, the debtors to come down, like in a normal business, unlike what we had in the utility business. So overall, I think by next year, we should see certain change in the working capital cycle of the smart meters. And uh, but that will only happen when almost, you know, 80-90% of the uh, the meters being supplied would be the smart meter, which I think should happen some uh, sometime next year. And hopefully we should see a much better working capital cycle. And uh, to answer more specifically, our, if you look at the return on capital employed, currently it is, uh, I think, about 9.5%. But uh, just if you go back maybe one, two years, we have seen certain improvements. And hopefully by next year we are uh, well above this, maybe at 12% plus. So, so things, uh, things I think are in a uh, much more positive uh, uh, growth cycle. But uh, I think uh, as we go forward, we should see certain better uh, margins, better uh, revenue, and also certain uh, balance sheet key ratios, which we hope uh, should also be much better. Okay, sir. So the second question which I had, on the healthy balance sheets of both the DISCOM and Modi agencies, you had mentioned that the major rollout will be happening the next year. So which uh, on the healthy balance sheet, as an AMI HP, I'm not seeing that energy, but you are meaning to say more of manufacturing side. Which states are we targeting mostly, and how do we see the rollouts to happen in these states uh, going forward? So that is first part. Second, I'll ask after as a follow. Now, so our, uh, you know, uh, we, we have been in uh, a energy, uh, we have been in electronic energy meters since 1996. Uh, so, uh, we, you know, so since last so many years, uh, we have been a pan-India player always. We have been supplying to every, practically every state, uh, all the central utilities and even the government organizations plus the private players. Now, uh, uh, so for us, uh, you know, uh, the, the pan-India and right now the, the entire uh, game is, you know, shifted through the AMI SPs. So there are a couple of large AMI SPs who have taken contracts in various 
uh, states. So it's not they are doing it in one state or two states, but maybe across it. So for us, the entire the market is all open. The entire uh, Pan India market is open. So we are not targeting specifically against one state or another, but it is generally we are targeting the business, and that is what we are hopeful to close and uh, go forward. So, uh, but yes, just uh, on one point, what you made that. Uh, you know, a lot of orders, and I'm just clarifying that a lot of orders currently have been given to the AMI SPs by the utilities, but then they also have to offload those orders to the uh, beta uh, manufacturers. So definitely there is a gap between that happening, and when we also get the order. So, so, so it's not just being an AMI SP and a manufacturer, it gives both advantages, if I'm getting it right from your sense. No, no, it's a, it's a separate business model because... Uh, in EMI SP, one has to uh, finance the projects for 10 years. It's a different uh, uh, different mindset, I would say, a different way of working, and uh, a totally different uh, financial model, what is there in EMI SP. And, uh, and, but there are large uh, companies who have uh, got into that and who are doing it. Uh, uh, similarly, uh, our focus is on the meter manufacturing. So uh, I'm just talking about that. The current orders, what we uh, hear about uh, on the news, are a lot of orders going to the AMI SP, and by the time those orders translate to the major manufacturers, there is probably a lag of maybe uh, three to four months. That is when uh, orders to us would start accruing, and uh, thereafter the supplies will start. Perfect. So in the last call, just to follow up your answer, in the last call you had mentioned the lag from the AMI SP to the manufacturer is around six to eight months has it reduced to three to, three to four months and I getting it right or it was no, like it's no. generally three to four months? No, I just clarify, let's say the the almost the 2000 crore orders what we have, those for us to start supplying those on confirmed orders, normally there is a gap of six to eight months. So if you see the orders we received in the first quarter, many of those first supplies would start probably in Q3 or in Q4. That is how it is. But, you know, as the AMI SPs are taking the orders, uh, you know, any, any when they take the orders, they have any really tested our solutions, our products. And sir, based sorry on, to interrupt. Uh, sir, your, your voice is not clear, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. So, uh, so yeah, it's clear now, sir. Okay. Yeah, so I was just, uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir, please. Sir. Yeah, so I was just saying that uh, when confirmed orders are coming from the AMISP to the manufacturers, that is when a lead time of six to nine months is required. And uh, the, uh, the gap is not because of the medium manufacturers, it is because of the ability of the AMISP and the utility to receive those meters and install them. So there is a lot of preparation work happening at the utility and AMISP. Uh, they can take in the smart meters and install them. The gap of three months, what I'm talking about is when an AMI SP receives the order, he needs to offload it. And, you know, this time starts immediately. So there are, uh, you know, deadline schedules which are uh, involved. There are other things. So that is when. But still, by the time they evaluate and they give it, a uh, certain time gap is always there. But uh, so that is it. So there is certain lag of, uh, uh, you know, gap when, uh, let's say, we as a manufacturer would get it from AMI SP. And thereafter, the preparation work happening by everybody in the ecosystem so that the meters can be supplied, which of course is about six to nine months. Perfect. Sir, if you have uh, an RDS scheme, the second question is in the RDS scheme, there is 1.5 lakh crore also allocated to distribution infrastructure. So are we plan any, do we have any plans to monetize the distribution infrastructure as well? Or whether our alternative uh, business, which is non metering segment, are we benefiting it from in that vertical? I just wanted your comments. Uh, yes, no. So uh, you know, uh, you know, on a macro level, I I I, I would not be you know I I won't know what uh, what it would be. But for us, as a uh, you know integrated manufacturer of uh, uh, all electrical products, so meter of course is a very strong component in the RDS scheme where the smart metering is happening. Now apart from that. Uh, since last couple of months, a lot of our switchgear items are also going in the RDS scheme, uh, almost in the similar installations. Now we have seen interest coming on the wire and cable also. So overall, when the distribution infrastructure is getting upgraded, definitely it provides an opportunity for 
uh, a company like us to have all their products uh, spec in and uh, uh, have, have the uh, uh, you, you know supplies going there. So definitely, it is going to help our other uh, products as well. And uh, this one being a very large scale, uh, you know, uh, uh, setting of the distribution infrastructure. So definitely, uh, I think every product, whether it's wire cable, switch gear, or uh, you know, I'm talking about the industrial part of switch gears or even the domestic one. So every product has an opportunity and we are already exploiting it uh, through the uh, various contractors or the installers uh, who are working on the field. So um, the, the line for the questioner dropped. Uh, so uh, we are going to announce for more questions. Uh, participants, you may press star and one if you want to ask a question to the management. We will wait for a moment for the question queue to assemble. Participants, uh, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Mr. Mudit Kabra from Elara Securities. Please go ahead, sir. Hi, uh, thank you for the opportunity and uh, congratulations on great set of numbers, sir. Um, firstly, can we have yes, sir? Can we have uh, the growth uh, numbers for wires and cables and switch switchgear segments specifically for Q2? Uh, uh, no, I think I have the H1 figures. I think it's about, uh, but it's almost on a similar pattern. Uh, like uh, uh, if you see switch gears, is, I think 22% in the first half. And, uh, but but through all throughout uh, the, uh, both the quarters, we have seen certain good growth coming in. And uh, similarly in wire and cables. So, so I think this is because wire and cables, even last uh, entire year, we had our almost 20% growth. So overall, uh, when we look at uh, the issue segments, uh, because of the uh, a lot of infrastructure spending, because of the housing coming back, uh, I think that is where we are seeing a, uh, a, a a growth across both these segments. So although when we look at the overall consumer and industrial, uh, barring lighting, which has uh, certain uh, changes in the industry, uh, you know, overall the pricings have come down. But other than that, these two segments uh, have seen a good growth. Also in uh, cable and wire, we see a continuous business of uh, the, 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 you know, to the telecom sector for the 5G cable. So we are seeing that also uh, steadily increase. In fact, uh, in just the last two months, we have closed uh, two new uh, customers in the 5G segment. And uh, so some of our, uh, you know, the specialization, what we have been doing in the last three to four years, so that is gaining much more momentum. And uh, that, but that's also a continuous business which uh, would at least uh, go on for the next one to two years. So, so overall, those segments are both. Uh, uh, we do see growth uh, in the second half as well. Fair, sir. Uh, thank you. And uh, secondly, like if I'm doing the match within the order book, um, smart meters might have grown by 17% on a quarter on quarter basis, while other than smart meters in the metering segment looks to have dropped by 38 odd percent of quarter on quarter basis. Is this attributable, attributable to some sort of demand weakness? No, I uh, frankly, I didn't uh, catch the maths, but just one thing, uh, you know, we are sitting on uh, about two, uh, uh, over 2000 crores of overall orders and uh, the bulk of them, of course, are the metering. Now the, uh, the, the still, you know, apart from the smart meters, Still, certain states are giving in the regular meter orders for just to cover up the gap while the installations are going on, and maybe for some more quarters that will also go on. But the bulk of the orders, what we have right now, are all smart meter orders. And uh, even going forward, the bigger inquiries what we have are all smart meters. So as a trend, yes, the smart meters would uh, really go up in a big way, and uh, 
maybe somewhere in the middle of next year or maybe even a little beyond that we would see almost most of them being only smart meters but uh, you know still it depends on the case of the execution what the utilities and the amsps can have and there are 20 parties the, in the conference we will also see the full change happening all right sir uh, one last question sir uh, we had 1.1 crore smart meter installations in the last year as you have given in the presentation uh, any guidance on effort when you for uh, target installation numbers no those are uh, that is the capacity number i think we are talking about so we roughly let's say we are at maybe uh, 60 70% capacity last year but this year it will uh, de definitely the the numbers will be better but you also have to understand that uh, uh, you, you know in smart meter even the values are higher so right now as and when uh, the installation happens we will see a better utilization capacity utilization happening so uh, but no specific number probably i can put in right now but yes uh, we are uh, eventually looking to uh, you know make uh, over 1 million uh, smart meters a month that is how we are looking at uh, so going forward uh, that that would be the target and i'm sure we are the kind of uh, automation initiatives and the other things uh, the, the, the capacity expansion what we are doing I think we could be definitely reaching those figures. Yeah. Um, fair enough, sir. Thank you for the insight. Uh, thank you. All the best uh, to the team. Yeah. Thanks, sir. Thank you. I now hand the conference over to to Mr. Mudit Kabra for closing comments. Uh, thank you. Uh, we thank Mr. Gautam Seth for giving us an opportunity to host this call. we also thank all the investors and the analysts for joining this call any closing remarks gautam sir yeah i'd like to thank uh, everyone for uh, coming in and uh, for their participation in our conference call today and uh, for joining us in our good journey so happy diwali to everyone here and uh, please have a pleasant evening thank you sir thank you sir on behalf of tara securities private limited that concludes the conference call Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.